Paul Gauguin struggled for artistic recognition all his life. The Frenchman's bold use of colour and abstract depictions of reality shocked 19th century art lovers. But today he's considered a trailblazer. A new exhibition in Paris's prestigious Grand Palais celebrates one of the world's most famous post-impressionists. His art totally surprised. It was like nothing else at the time. It was without concessions. It was wild. In fact, he often called himself wild. It really shocked people. Some people supported him, but it wasn't until the start of the 20th century that people realized he was such a revolutionary. Gauguin was fascinated with tribal art and other cultures. When success in Europe eluded him, he left for France's colonies in the South Pacific. It's a period that has come to define him, but not without controversy. The paintings created by Gauguin in Tahiti are some of his most popular. He was obviously captivated by the people and the colours. But some critics say that this period of his life has become so romanticised in France that perhaps it ignores some uncomfortable realities. Tahiti was under French colonial rule and the artist enjoyed many of the system's privileges. He married a 13-year-old girl and had numerous lovers of a similar age. But these aspects of Gauguin's life are rarely discussed in France. A new film about his time in Tahiti has been attacked by those who say it avoids some hard truths. Professor Stazak's written extensively about Gauguin. He says criticizing French culture and the colonial past is simply taboo here. Um, the history of colonization is still a very touchy issue in France, much more than in, uh, in the UK or the US. For many people in Tahiti, Gauguin is nothing but a, a, a colonist uh, drunkard who basically looted uh, Polynesian and Tahitian culture and art uh, to make a living. How Gauguin chose to live is unlikely to matter to the millions of people who enjoy his art but others may find it enriching to have a clearer picture of the man behind the paintings. Natasha Butler, Al Jazeera, Paris.